perfect. Right here. Thank you, man. Uh, blessings. So how's your day like today? Like, uh... I got a meeting in two minutes. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, hello and welcome to another episode of Buckle Up and Man Oh Man. This is just uh, very, very exciting. I could not believe that uh, my guest really said yes to this, which is uh, really, <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really happy. So he's a film critique, uh, uh, GQ, Middle East, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, an Arabia, uh, you got Arab News, Vice, Arabia, The Insider. Overall, a kick-ass personality, seriously. Somebody who sits down with actors, uh, somebody who sits down with filmmakers, directors, professionals, professional wrestlers sometimes. Sometimes. Um, and uh, overall, I love the way he asks questions. I love the way he breaks the ice with these guys. So, uh, William, I hope I say your family name right, Malali. Nailed it. Nice. <laughs> Welcome to Buckle Up, my brother. Thank you. Thank How you are you, bro? You good? Well, thank you for the kind words. Oh man, Se seriously, I look up to you. I, I swear. When you know, I'm I'm into interviews. I host a hip hop radio show in Saudi since 2011, and um, your style of interviews and the way you you do things is really incredible. Well, so, thank you. I really appreciate um, that. Yeah, you know. And um, so, you ready to buckle up? Let's do it. Now you can buckle up. All right. Yeah. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, because I know you, uh, I tweeted that I'm going to be interviewing you and your tweet was kind of funny. We're going to put it right here. <laughs> you, you tweeted, I want to, <laughs> I shouldn't read it. You tweeted something. I will be a guest on Big Hasse's show um, in order to demonstrate and raise awareness about proper seatbelt etiquette. People need to know. Right? People don't seem to know. How important is that? Okay, Very cool. Important. Perfect. So, um, uh, William, actually the first time we met, I mean, this is a, 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 such an, a, an outfit upgrade for both of us. First time we, we met was at a, at a convenience store. Um, I think I was wearing my pajamas. Like I thought okay. I could make it to the convenience store with nobody seeing me. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and, and then I popped up and I was, oh my God. And then I tweeted saying, oh, I just met the great William. You know, and then you tweeted back. Yeah, you know, I didn't know I'm going to meet Big Hoss like at 1.30 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yeah, but it's... Uh, Talking about outfit, you have a certain outfit that always, um, and also big up to the beard. That when when you're interviewing people, it feels like it's a really icebreaker. It, am I am I right to think so? And when I watch some of your interviews, it's really like people talk about the beard, people talk about the outfit. Well, that's the thing. Like for interviews, I don't really write down any questions whatsoever. Nice, like, I like that. Okay. I need to know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Obviously, I got to know them. I got to know things front to back. Yeah. But I want it to be in the moment. But the one thing that I will think about is how am I going to make this? Because a junket, I, people usually don't know how junkets work. You yes. know, they think like maybe I called up you know, Ben Affleck and we're going to meet at a cafe somewhere no. and just sit this down. <laughs> when they do this, they're, it's all the press from the entire world. And the whole day or something like that. And that like some, sometimes multiple days. Mm. And so you're going to be shuffled in there. You're going to get five minutes with this guy. Yes. Yes. And then you're going to be shuffled right back out. Yeah. And I think it's really hard for people to break through that because if you're sitting there, you know, if you're, you know, Chris Pratt or yeah, Samuel Donald, L. Jackson, Samuel Jackson, wow, Hans Zimmer, <laughs> come Hans on, Zimmer, you're, you, I mean, you've been doing these interviews for years. Yeah, you've been doing them all day, probably for months by now. You're probably on a global tour. Yeah. You just kind of want to get through it. You want to answer the questions. And you're not really focusing on who's in front of you. True. And so what I have to do is I have to be like, I need to get them to focus on me. You know, I need to break through. <laughs> I need to make an impression, and yeah. I need to them to see that I'm a real person in front of them. You know, I, lo I love so this that. This is you two people that. meeting. It's yeah. not just like a journalist meeting yeah. another guy. I, I I I had the pleasure of watching the Hans Zimmer one. It was so funny because you were wearing the Winnie the Pooh one. Yeah, uh, I found that at a vintage <laughs> store. That's a great shirt. <laughs> That's a great shirt. And then obviously you asked him a deep question in the beginning. He's like, "Oh man, I thought we were having gonna have fun now. What's <laughs> happening with that?" Uh, but but seriously, on all seriousness, like this is you, what you do is really appreciated. I, I try to um, watch all the all the stuff that you have. The cutaway. Tell us about the cutaway. It's your YouTube channel. It's a, yeah, it's a YouTube channel. It's it's my blog. It's my yes. podcast. Yeah. And I basically, you know, I work for all these different outlets. Yes. But I found that, you know, being the nature of media right now, being you know the nature of you know being in the Middle East, there's some stories that I just couldn't tell. I couldn't uh, tell them in my way. Yeah. I couldn't put things in my own voice. Yeah. You know, certain um, you know subject matter sometimes. You know, people are just a little too sensitive. Even if it's something that you know, it's not, we can talk about it. The media likes to kind of shy away from certain I hear subject you. matter. So you put a sense that the video and the cutaway is not even edited. It's just the way it is. Like, or maybe some of them. Uh, I mean, right. it's edited and it's back and forth. But okay. I don't like 
cut it to make myself look good. Okay, okay. You know, if okay. somebody's gonna like own me, I will let them own me. Ah, <laughs> Ellen man. Page owned me pretty hard. Oh yeah, I saw that one. Okay, no, but one of my favorites, uh, you know, uh, is when I can't even say his last name well. Jake uh, Gallenhay. Gyllenhaal. Gyllen. Gyllenhaal. Although apparently it's Yilin originally. Wow. Like it's okay. Dutch. Oh, but it's chillin. Oh. Okay. Yeah. When you said that you had your first kiss on October Sky, and and, it was, and that's true. Yeah, that's that's real. <laughs> see, you guys, you know, we're we're asking because I saw some comments. Is that real? That's real. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. How do you, when you break the ice, do you really find it at the moment, or you prepare for it a day in advance or so, or it's at the spot kind of thing? Yeah, I mean that re that really depends. Like some people. I, I'm, I'm a big person who feeds off someone's energy yes. as well. Yes. Um, I can only do so much. So if I'm sitting like I was with Chiwetel Ejiofor, yeah. I haven't posted this one yet, okay. but wow. I had no idea how to break the ice with Chiwetel. Like, he's a serious, you know, Shakespearean actor. I was like, so how's it being in London? Right, because you're from London. It's like, I. <laughs> and he laughed at me because yeah. I was just a terrible icebreaker. Yeah. Oh, man. So, but I mean, then I have to immediately pivot because you have this mm. much time. So mm -hmm. I had to get into a deep yeah, conversation. Yeah. It, but with somebody like. You know, with Jake, it, it just when I think about you know the fact that I'm going to meet someone like Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah, he's you know the best, one of the best actors in the whole yes, world. Yeah, so I'm just thinking underrated, about, I think, in my opinion too. Yeah, yeah, and I don't want to like put myself into every story, but mm. if somebody meant something to you, like at a key per like point in your life, mm, mm. that's just what you're thinking about, you know. So it's not necessarily that I'm preparing as much as I'm you know opening up. Wow. Okay, that's, that's and that provides them a platform to open up to. That's good to hear, um, uh, William. You studied uh, arts and creative writing. Yeah, with, uh, the, with film is in there. Yeah. Well. Okay. So you knew back then that you're gonna get into like this critiques and reviews, like back then when you studied that. You know, actually, the first film review that I ever wrote was for my high school paper. I reviewed Zoolander. Wow. And <laughs> they rejected the interview. They were like, they rejected the review. They were like, this review is so bad, we're not gonna publish it. And I, I just. You know, I could have taken that moment and been like, all right, this isn't my thing. I'm going to go do something else. But I just kept thinking about, you know, what Yo, was it about yeah, it. I kept story. trying to improve. I swear you know? to God, again, I, I, this life is, I, I interview a lot of people and it's always the same kind of story. If you look at Michael Jordan, he got rejected and he got backed out from his high school coach. Yeah. Who right now we look at him like, what are you thinking? Yeah. So did you feel kind of the same thing that, with that? The rejection gave you the fuel to, you know what, I'm going to show, like, because you love movies, right? You love. Yeah. Did that kind of fuel you? Or yeah, because no? I'm a 14 year old kid. Mm. At a high school paper, when you're older, it's like, oh, it's a high school paper. When yeah, you're yeah. in high school, those are the people you look up to. Yeah. Those people who's, yeah. you know, you're really trying to you know, get the respect of. But I had to kind of get it to where I need to be making this good for me. I need to build something for myself mm. where I'm proud of what I'm trying to say. Mm. And obviously, I'm always going to try to improve off that. But I think it's less about trying to win somebody's favor then just recognizing the work itself is what I need it to be. And the more I can get towards that, the better I can actually find people's respect. You know, when I'm chasing after it all the time, I never yeah. find it. I mean, personally for me, as somebody who is into, you know, uh, you know, blogging and journalism in general, I really find it amazing when, when the actor or the whoever you're interviewing says like, that's a good question. Because <laughs> I, I mean, shout out to all my, you know, colleagues out there. Some of, some of us really ask some really like really weird questions that are really that have no you did not show that you research or did that or did that and which gives that kind of um image that some journalists out there i see that in sports i see that yeah. in filming there's always and the actor would say next yeah well because i think people end up asking the same questions like, yeah i don't even think about i know <laughs> you know whether or not they've had this conversation a hundred times that day yeah um one i will have to say though when people say that's a good question sometimes that's just a delay sometimes that's to flatter you okay and so i, I think one of the okay. things <laughs> one like i think asking a good question is not about coming up with the cleverest you know smartest possible thing in order to show off to somebody the good question is the question that gets a good answer that can be the most basic thing in the world that can be asking mm. you know, that can be sitting down when with, you like, when you somebody. asked when you asked uh, i don't know the guy from one direction who's funnier the rock or kevin hart <laughs> that was cool and kept you know Rock yeah, was like, I'm that's just... a good question right there. <laughs> I need to play them off each yeah. other, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's silly, yeah. but I know that I'm just trying to get this Do, do you reaction. get intimidated by how big these are, the guys are? Like, you're meeting, like, 
you really amazing. I don't know how, I've never really been, what did you call it? Uh, um, this series of interviews? Is it, it has a name, uh, um, an interview run? Like a junket. Yes. Yeah. So these, uh, do you get intimidated by some of the people that you meet? Does that, like, do you get nervous, for example, if you're meeting somebody who's... You know, I never really know what's going to happen until it Oh, wow, it okay. Really? You know? Like, mm. I, I find that if I looked up to you when I was a little kid, if that kid inside of me still feels that way, he's going to rear his head in that moment. And okay. I'm not going to know until I'm sitting there with Harrison Ford and I'm just getting flustered. <laughs> you know? Or, like, professional wrestlers, for example. Like, yeah. For some reason, you know, because... <laughs> professional wrestlers are out there like you know these they're your heroes yes, those, yeah. are the, those are the real life superheroes so yeah. if I'm sitting there meeting Rey Mysterio Yo. or Sting I'm just like okay Mr. Sting <laughs> wow I, I can't really handle who, who are your favorite wrestlers I mean growing up like what, who did you like like I read The Rock's biography so oh, there's certain wow. things like he'll say things in okay. like, I knew that when I was 13 years old <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing that makes I had it to know. Yeah. oh man yeah, this is but yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, interviewing like like I was saying before, like, I, I think a lot of times I don't even know if I'm giving a good interview because one of the things that I focus on is just how you're doing with a person. Like the same way you like if we're meeting you, if you feel like we're getting along. If okay. Feel like you, you know, focus on that during vibe. the interview. Yeah, because that's just what you're naturally used to focusing on when you're in front of somebody. You know, are you like being entertaining? Are you being likable? But I found that that's actually a really bad metric of whether or not I'm giving a good interview sometimes. Mm. Like the Hans Zimmer thing. Like, yeah. I could have continued on, like, doing the <laughs> bands, et cetera. But would, we would have talked about nothing. Yeah. If I turn this to the fact that, you know, he wrote the Lion King score yes. because he was dealing with the death of his father. Yes, yes. And now he's writing this new one because he's dealing with, like, global climate change destroying the planet. Mm. That's not going to get him laughing, but that's a much more interesting answer. I though. hear you, yeah. No, but the, the, you asked him the question about about him being also a father. Yeah. And that is, I think, you know, like, I, I just, again, saluting you again, because we really... When when you when you mention when you mention that you're from Dubai because I've seen you sometimes mention that you're obviously from Boston yeah right shout out Boston are you a <laughs> Celtic fan or of course okay okay Boston Hands. sports teams are too good not to support. hands down yeah I'm okay. gonna support the Knicks no I, I, I don't want that kind of punisher in my life <laughs> God okay my New York fans it's okay I mean Knicks I don't know when the Knicks will make it happen but I mean, when they sell the team yeah that's the answer sorry <laughs> that's funny he's like guys it's straight. But Boston Celtics, man, Celtic pride is there. You ever, oh, you ever attended a Celtic game? Of course. Okay. And the energy in that, in that it, building. It's something else. I went to Madison Square Garden, and that's the only game I've attended. Was uh, it a good crowd? It was a good crowd. I was watching my hero, Shaquille O'Neal. He's somebody mm. who... Uh, who was he playing for at the time? He was playing for New York. For... Uh, no, he was playing for Boston, bro. Yeah, that was a good, that I was watched a good year. I Boston, Boston and New York. That was like 2008, 2009? Yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that, correct. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really good, good time. Shaq was, and, let me check. He's and fantastic. Man, you know, yeah, I'm, I look up to him and I was like screaming in the middle of the <laughs> crowd. And you know, in the NBA, they have a rule when they're playing, you cannot walk, you have to sit. Yeah. And I was like, there was a timeout and I'm yelling at the crowd. I saw Whoopi Wahlberg and I saw like, oh, I'm like, yo, Shaq, I came all the way from Saudi Arabia. And the woman was like, do you say Saudi Arabia here? <laughs> I think Shaq respects all people. I think so. He's I think very, so. You ever met Shaq? Open, man. I haven't yet. Um, That's one of those things that is kind of a bucket list thing. Okay. okay. He, he, he's in time. a couple of movies. Maybe maybe we'll see him. Who's an NBA player you met? Oh, which one? Did I meet an NBA player? I don't even remember. <laughs> Am I forgetting somebody? No, I don't know. I don't even Larry know. Bird? <laughs> Larry Bird? I'd love to meet Larry Bird. Yeah. My friend is actually producing Space Jam 2 right now. What? Wait. Hold up. Wait, the one with LeBron James. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Are I mean, you going to do a, an interview about for that one too? I, I, I spoke to him on the phone right before he went to the set because huh. I wanted to speak to him just about what it's like to make original movies right now. And mm. he's like, well, I'm also going to make Space Jam 2 right now. There's rumors that he co-wrote it with his friend Ryan Coogler, who, you know, brought us Black Panther, what? Creed. They're what? buddies. Like, they, they do everything together. Yo, that makes sense because LeBron James is also very active on socially, like yeah. social issues. So that really... Yeah, I so wow. I think he called. Were up you a fan of the guys. first one? Oh yeah, of course. Okay, loved it. Okay, oh, it's amazing. Do you think he has a big shoes to fill, LeBron? Like with how it was done the first time? I think it just it captured. It wasn't just about you know Michael and you know that. It, it was like the perfect time for nostalgia of Looney Tunes as well because it's like the mid nineties. Correct. Yeah. We'd all grown up with the reruns. Yeah. Now it's a bit different. Now we're we're nostalgic for the nineties. So it's a nostalgia piece about a nostalgia piece. Wow. And it's 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 hard to capture that a second time. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of do the exact same thing and go through the motions, you're not really going to find it the same way. Yeah, yeah. But I think 
LeBron is smart enough that you can't really he underestimate him. He is. Like, he, is. he says he's going to show up in Trainwreck, and you're like, you're going to act in Trainwreck with Bill Hader? And he was hilarious in that <laughs> yeah. movie. Like, yeah, he was. He was. He's good. Okay, I don't know how much time you got, but I can spend two or three no, hours fine. with you, bro. Like easy, but uh, um, I wanted to ask you which interviews were a bit uneasy, like f- for you, like which you felt like, oh, I'm not able to connect. You know, I I yeah. I feel sir that so, certainly said that sometimes with with a couple of musicians, but with you, which one has been eh, you felt like? Oh. Yeah, I, I think that there's two camps. You know, there's the. I think that maybe he doesn't like me, and maybe he just has some things going yes, on. Yes, yes, yeah. Like it's probably the second one. <laughs> You're very likable. I'm just saying that. <laughs> or yeah, there's, there's the flip side where it's like I asked them an uncomfortable question okay. to get an uncomfortable answer, and have, I had to make that happen. Ever, and I felt bad. Have you ever done that? Yeah, like um, Denis Villeneuve, who directed, you know, Prisoner. Yeah. Um, yeah. Blade Runner. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, Sicario. What? Like, what he's was, one of the best directors. What was the question? Today. So he worked with a guy called Johan Johansson, who's okay. the you know amazing composer and musician yes. who tragically died last year. But he mm. was actually mm. he got cut halfway through the making Blade Runner. He got cut. Yeah. But nobody knew what happened, and he got replaced by Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Really. I didn't ask Hans about this because <laughs> okay. you know at this point I'm not sure I should bring it up. But nobody had ever asked Denis about this. You know, mm. people go in there, they're just like, so what's it like working with Harrison? And then they leave. Yeah. So I'm like, what happened with Johan? That, that, that show. Mm. Yeah, Johan was nominated for an Oscar yes. when they were working for Sicario. Like, yeah. he's one of the best guys working together. And he kind of, like, I'd met him before. And the first time I met him, I was talking about how amazing he is. I was flattering him. Yeah. And he just had this air of, oh, look at me. I'm you know, one of the best directors in the world. Yes. And then here he just froze up and he went like this. And he got really uncomfortable, and I was like, "Oh no, I made Daddy mad!" You know, <laughs> like you get that kind of like it's the guy you look up to. All of a sudden, he seems mad at you. Yeah, you know, it's that sort of like How basic that fear. Like, really? uh, it felt bad, but then that did quote, he answer the question? He answered the question. He gave, and it was it was news. Like it was all over. It was the top story on IMDb for two separate days. Man. Like it went everywhere. And, you know, sometimes you have to push through that. But sometimes yeah. somebody's just not having a good day. Yeah. Like, I interviewed Ben Affleck. Yeah. And. <laughs> He was just like, literally, can you bleep me if I say yeah. a bad no, word? No, 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 you can. This is buckle like, up. The interview finished. He's just like, I hate doing these fucking interviews. And I was like, and he says that after to the, the guy next to him. It's done. While I'm sitting in oh, front of him. Oh, while you're sitting in front of him. I'm still sitting there. <laughs> so he knows that he's saying that to me. And the whole interview is just like, uh. Yeah, at one point it's he before said. before or after? <laughs> right after. So okay. As soon as I'd finished. So I, he, this was him evaluating my performance. Oh, man. And it, like, he'd given these weird answers the whole time. Like, I asked him why he wanted to go. He was making Live by Night. Um, wow. And I'm like, why did you want to, what, like, what interested you about this time period? Like, why did you want to go back to 1920s? He's like, oh, man, the chicks were great back then. I'm like, this is your answer. <laughs> but I'm like, and so I'm thinking, okay, I hear you. this guy might be a jerk, right? But then two weeks later, you know, it broke the news broke that, you know, his, his marriage was ending. Yes. He was going to rehab. Yeah. He was clearly going through something really difficult. He was difficult. going through a difficult time. So I can't, I, I think that's one of the problems that people have when they meet celebrities. This is such a pivotal moment in their life that they judge everything. It's like, oh, Ben Affleck's the nicest guy. Oh, Ben Affleck's a jerk. But it's like, you never really know what's going on in their life at that's, that moment. That's a very good, I mean, from, from somebody who's in the industry, I think also we don't, we have to know that they're humans, man. Yeah. Like, you know, like they... They have good days, they have bad days, yeah. they have fights with their husbands, wives, whatever, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is. It, yeah, I hear you. Okay, um, if I would tell you that who are your top like three interviewees, like people you interview, like some really like highlights of William, oh, like which Jeff, one would it be? Jeff Goldblum, I think okay. is a good one. Yes, for sure. But that was one of those interviews where it's just, it's just Jeff Goldblum. Yes. Like, we're yeah. sitting there. He's asking me about, oh, we're talking about gummy bears for some reason. Gummy bears? We're just talking about gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I haven't seen it. I'm going to check that out. Okay. okay. I was like, why is this happening? But it's just, just go Jeff Goldblum. Like, mm-hmm. that's just his energy. He's the kind of guy that you just want to talk to anything yeah. about. Um, I think the first time, I, like, I just interviewed Jake for Spider-Man. Yes. And he was hilarious. I think he was just on this, like, crazy energy, this whole last press tour. But when he and I sat down to talk about life, which is not one of his most famous, you know, movies. I love the answers for this one, by the way. Yeah, I, I think it was after I, you know, I told him about the kiss thing. He, mm. he literally said to me, because you opened up to me, I'm going to give you the real answers. I'm not going to give you the junket answers. Man, that's... And so he started, like, really talking about his career, the way he approaches his art, you know, why he makes the choices that he does. Yes. And it was just, you know, he might have gotten those questions before, but if, you don't, if you're not able to break through, you're not going to get those real answers. Yeah. And I really felt like I got them. Yeah. And so those oh, are the you, things that, like... Yeah, I just watched this just before meeting you right now. I loved it. I seriously did. It was really, yeah, like really, really dope. You can feel it when yeah, it's real. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the people who watch now, too. 
How does that work in terms of you interviewing? Like you're putting it on your channel, but these are obviously air on the other platforms. Do people, you know, for for example, Al Arabiya has some stuff for exclusively for Al Arabiya. Well, it depends. I mean, it's I have to come to different agreements. With, okay, you know, with each with platform. Different outlets. Okay. I might, you know, say, or it might just be like a moment. You know, like okay, okay, like 40, 50 that, seconds. Yeah, like they might get like here's 40 seconds for your Instagram. But the rest of that video, they weren't even going to use. I got and that's it. a lot of times, if it's going on the news or something, they'll use like a minute and then they'll move on. But yes. that whole interview is something that I kind of want to have just as an archive, you know, not necessarily mm. just to make my own platform work, but just because I care about that it, conversation. Is the YouTube channel is something that you want to push? Because I really want to push that. Oh you know, yeah, for, it is for I, you. Because you know? I think that if I'm like I, I hadn't even thought about making it at my own outlet. Okay. But I, I think one of the things about working in media is that it's it's it's, it's hard now. Like. Yeah. People change their minds all the time. People are chasing after different audiences. They're chasing after clicks in different ways. And if you really want to have some permanency and like stick with something that you care about, you have to build it yourself. Yeah, and true. You, I mean, you've done that. Yeah, I try. And but, yeah. I'm trying to. <laughs> so I mean, if it's, William, when you if that when, can get me that, yeah. Then, then, uh, when, yeah. When you say Dubai to the to these guys, who maybe some of them haven't maybe heard of Dubai or so, what's what, what's the, some of the reactions that you get? Like you know, because you say in Dubai, of yeah, I'm from Boston, but from Dubai, what's yeah. the reaction? I, I think it's it's always really interesting when you do bring it up because because okay. I know Samuel L. Jackson been here before and you asked him about that. Yeah, and I, I think that that's one of the funny things. I think when anyone comes here, the second they'll get off a plane and they'll just drive to a hotel. <laughs> yeah, but then they'll get asked by every interview, "What do you think of Dubai so far?" It's like, well, I went from the car to the airport, and it's like, <laughs> yo, yo, this is what I, I I feel for that. But because because they're they're very honest and obviously they don't need any journalist or anyone to make them more famous. Yeah, so yeah. they really as real as it gets. Really, yeah. when someone I just got off the plane. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> what can I answer you, right? Yeah, and then if it's somebody, those are the Samuel Jacksons of the yeah. world. If it's yeah. somebody who's up and coming, they'll yes. just come up with like, oh, I know. Oh well, the you know, they'll come Culture up with some. Is... <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, dude, you just can't. You went through duty for you. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn? You, you smelled some myrrh, and now you know about the culture. I mean, it's so, fine. They're trying. I know. They're, they're being nice. But, like, I, yeah, I think that when you have people that are here, mm. hopefully they get to see a little bit of it. I think when you get people that maybe they think that Dubai is just one thing. Yes. Like, oh, it's just the luxury. Or it's just like, it's oh, the, the tallest opulence. building in the world, and that's it. Yeah, that's why, like, if, when guys come for Comic-Con or they used to come for the film festival, if I'm sitting with them, I'll sit there and be like, here's X, Y, Z things they need to do. I need to go to check out, you know, Special Study in Bird Dubai. I need you to go down to the Spice Hook and walk through. And I know Bless this guy you. who's got the best hun- Bless uh, you, man. You know, honey. Yo, like, guys. Go to Sharjah. <laughs> one, one of our heroes right there. Sorry, I messed up with this guy. My bad. Uh, but definitely, that's amazing what you just said, because I think... It is always our stories are being told for us. This is a narrative. It's always on Buckle Up. Yeah. We don't have someone, you know. Um, but it, I, I really wanted to ask you, how? when did you come to Dubai? Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Yeah, so, it, I mean, it wasn't really a plan. Um, so I was, you know, still in university. Okay. And, you know, being an American, I think that, again, I love, I love Americans, I love America. But when it's such a gigantic country. It is. And when, you know, so much of the country doesn't even have a passport. Yes. They don't really Do have, have an awareness of the, the rest 70, of the world. 80%? Yeah, I think it's 70%. Yeah, yeah. 70% of the country doesn't even have a passport. Yeah. And, you know, people that do get to go abroad, a lot of times it's, you know, for, like I did a semester in London. Yeah. And a lot of people, that's like their moment. Maybe they get to travel at certain points. But I really wanted to get a sense of the world. And the cool thing about Dubai is that it is the most cosmopolitan city on earth. Meaning, it has more people from different countries yeah. mixing in a way that is unlike anywhere else in the world. Correct. There's countries, I mean, there's cities like, you know, Hong Kong or Singapore that are international, but they're still mostly, uh, you know, a local population and then international people fitting in. Yeah. Here, it's not, I mean, it's not even like a melting pot. It, it is a salad bowl. Like, you can get, you can go yeah. to a, you know, I, Nigerian comedy night yeah. at a bar and you will feel like you are in <laughs> Nigeria yeah. for the entire night. Yeah. And you can just get a sense of culture mm, here in a way that is unlike anything else in the world. It's true. I mean, I'll add to that. It feels to me that even the people who have problems outside Dubai, over here, they're okay. Yeah, true. So <laughs> It's so weird, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, I, I think people also, it feels like this international space station yeah. in a lot of ways. You know, it's like, I was a big Star Trek guy growing up. Nice. And it feels like we're on Deep Space Nine because <laughs> there's all these different people coming from all these places. But for them, this is... 
this is a place of opportunity. It's a sanctuary for some people. Yes. You know, they can find True. something here that they couldn't home. find yeah. back home. Yeah. They can learn about different cultures in different ways and ways that they're they're trying to and other ways that are unexpected. Yeah, that's and I think that there's so many beautiful things about that. Man. Um my, my co host, I'm sure maybe I'm I'm sure you know Anna Schofield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's also my co host and she uh we you know on the radio and we she always talked about how getting inside this obviously um culture has changed her perception about islam about arabia and uh, you're also on radio you was on radio to buy yeah yeah big up to that that's amazing and i i love the fact that you're mashallah like a spider web like you're on youtube <laughs> tv radio it all happened kind of does it get really like, hectic sometimes for you like how oh, does it, it does man yeah. it does yeah like, like as the human william because i tried to research interviews for you like, I want to know about William. I couldn't find anything. I kind of have held off. There's okay. other people that, you know, have asked me to. Okay. Just so I feel blessed. It. Yeah, it's just, I, I don't know. I feel kind of, I get kind of, you know, awkward talking about myself okay. sometimes. Not because I'm, um, I just feel like if I'm going to brag about myself or I would have you. No, but, but the work you've done, man, again, it, it may, because like you said, these interviews that you do are six, seven minutes, maximum eight minutes. And it's like, it, it, you cannot really go into it. Like the questions are either you know straightforward or maybe sometimes two three questions the long answers and then you're that's it you're done yeah and it's just and like you said it's like okay nice to meet you next yeah next and you don't know what what is your number that what how many people that have seen before you it's such a it's such a difficult job um the reason why i'm saying this is because what what you do is something i've always aspired to do for music mm. I don't have that opportunity. Like you, ha movie industry is really big. The music industry is really big. We don't have anything in music where they go on a run to talk mm. about their, they have something where they come to radio stations yeah. and they do that. With this case, I feel they're sitting down on chairs and the, and the critiques or film interviewers are coming in and they yeah. ask him questions. I have to go to them, first of mm. all. Like it's very rare that I get these guys to come to me. Yeah. Like I have to, go through every possible you know way you know, sometimes traveling across the world just to get that five minutes with those people so a lot of times that's the hardest part of my job you know mm -hmm. just the, the just travel the legwork the you know finding where this person's gonna be and being there at the same time you know chasing after these people sometimes months in advance you know just to get their schedule right so wow. I, I think For five six seven minutes yeah I, I, I think when when you're just focusing on who's going to come here and whether or not you can get this time with these people and there's you know this mad rush to, to yes. get that that time with them and it's like oh well, this guy's got you know xy followers and they're doing their sort of excel chart on this sort of thing yeah i think a lot of times if you if you wait that's when everyone else is going to mm. you have to make your own opportunity you gotta make it yeah i yeah that's crazy what has been the most difficult thing you ever faced as william and the, when the hardships go and you could Hmm. We we see the the guy who interview actors and filmmakers and asks amazing questions, wear incredible clothes and, and break ice. <laughs> but as William, what has been something so challenging in your life that maybe you can share with us? Uh, I mean, there's a there's a lot. There was a time in Dubai when I was like I I, I thought that there'd be this you know great job opportunity, uh. and it ended up paying nothing like i could not live on the wage that's tough and especially in dubai like that's <laughs> yeah and I, was, I was staying with someone else um but then they didn't want someone to stay with them anymore so they, they kicked me out and so I, there was a point where i couldn't like i couldn't keep the job anymore because i couldn't even afford to go there mm. to get to the job and so i had literally zero dollars in my bank accounts the only time i ever looked and it was a zero I had nowhere to stay. I had to stay on my friend's couch. I didn't even fit on the couch. Wow. And I was in his room. Wow. My legs didn't fit on it, so my legs like held <laughs> off the side. What year was that? And I had to, this was 2013. Okay. And I, had, I like my friend had a bunch of like filled out coupons for free sandwiches at Subway. You're kidding. And it was like a week where I just ate free sandwiches <laughs> at Subway because I, the, I just really, and yeah, I remember. That's, that, I, that's, I can't even, that's tough. Yeah, and I'd stayed for, like I'd stayed in Dubai for a relationship at a mm. certain point. And mm. when we were, when that was ending, I remember she said something like, well, if you're only here for me, then leave. And this was, you know, going on at that same time. And mm. that was when I sat down and I thought, because I, I, before that I was I was doing all these different things and I was writing for this magazine over yeah. here. Yeah. I was teaching, um, I, I was, I, but it wasn't really focused. I wasn't really working for me. I was just kind of taking things as they come. And when she said that, I thought, you know, I need to think about what opportunity in Dubai I could build for myself like 
have I just focused on this one thing or have I really focused on what I can make it for myself? You know, what, what do I, what exactly do I want and how can I, how can I get those sorts of things? You know, what is going to make me happy? What's going to make me feel fulfilled? Wow. And I think that's one of the hard parts about, uh, I, I, there's so many times when I've turned down, you know, a lot of money or yeah. just not been able to, you know, play the game, etc. because I need to feel fulfilled unless I, if I can't feel fulfilled in doing something, I can't do it. That's a very difficult decision though. Yeah, but I had to... I had, you to, had to do it. It's that question. It's like, okay, am I going to go back to the States? Am I going to go, you know, get, live on my parents' couch, rebuild, figure out a new plan? Or am I going to take this city that provides all this opportunity and find a way to make myself valuable here? You know, make this work for me, make this opportunity work for me. And so I had to build from not even... Uh, not having a house, not even having a room, not having a dollar in order to build up to what I have now and so for me I'm always thinking back to you know who I was in 2013 and who I am in 2019 and you know how I got here and you know now what I'm thinking about is now that I've climbed up this tree you know how many branches are here do I need to go on a different tree you know <laughs> what is growth from here like what is the next step at, at this point that's what I'm trying to figure out but presidents you know, I'll, I'll think about the fact that there was a time when I was just on the ground looking up and not even knowing what I'm looking up at. Uh, thank you for sharing that I know it's uh... I feel blessed when people really open up and it's not easy. It's, uh, uh, it, 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 I mean, everyone has their own story, you know, and I think everyone has their own path. Uh, I mean, we in Islam, we believe really like everyone has a path and everything is written. Everything is like, you know, and no matter what God gives you, um, we have a saying, you know, you know, God only gives you, you know, something that you only can handle. Yeah. He doesn't give you something you cannot handle. So the tougher it is, that means the more tested it is. I know it sounds really crazy. Um, but uh, but that's the way it is. But man, it's uh, seriously. I there's a lot of ways I look up to you. The way you ask questions for me is really an incredible way. Um, the, the how you break. I was watching like a lot of your interviews. There's always a way because you know you got the people telling you when we're starting now. There's always a way. There's always something that you say, and that for me is really like genius. I salute you for that. Yeah, I, 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 a lot of times I'm sitting out there thinking <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes out, no? Yeah, it comes yeah. out. And I, I like, I'm always sitting there saying, I'm gonna sit there in silence and end up staring and drooling off my face. And I like that. That doubt is always in me, okay. no matter what. Yeah. Like even to now. Even I even doubted myself before interviewing you. So it happens. Yeah, you sit. You sit there and you yeah. think, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Yeah. But I've just gotten to the point where. I've seen it work out so many times, I just have to trust that I'm going to do a good job. I need to like put some faith in myself, even though every little voice inside me is telling me to, to yeah. not. Yeah. And just accept. And like that's the only way I can get myself to calm down, you know? Um, you're more active on Twitter than Instagram. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm trying to get the Instagram. Yeah. Look, I mean, I think you can tell that like I Stories, have... Stories, bro. We want to see the beard. I have Up things close. to say. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easier to just, you know, type things here and there, like make an offhanded comment. Yeah. Um, I think Instagram has been like a process for me. I had to like train myself to be like, uh, you know, I need to do this because I, I think a lot of the ways that people make it work on Instagram are ways that aren't just don't come naturally to me. You know, like sitting at a camera talking about this. And I think one of the things that I like, yeah, I just want to add to something. Yeah. When people, when so-called influencers try to open a, a bag, yeah. And they try to shoot it. I try to do that. I don't know how they do it in one hand. No, seriously, they open it. There's a skill. How do you open it in one hand? Like, you know, and, they, and then they go like, one second, I have to open it and I'll come back to you. Okay. And you see this whole process. You're like, I don't need to see that. So you're right. I see what you're saying. I like the, the people who are just, you know, they cut every five seconds. What was happening in those cuts? Like, are, what, like <laughs> what did that actual sentence look like? I, yeah. I could never really figure that that's, out. That's, yeah, yeah. That's one of the But are we going to see you more active on Instagram? Are you, yeah. do you have plans? I mean, well, that's the thing. It's just, I, I have to, to force myself to, to have that kind of a thing. And I, I think that I need, again, make it work for me. Like, okay. the thing I like about, I think every single, like, social media platform yeah. is about what you aren't good enough when you're looking at it like it makes you feel inadequate no matter what like on facebook it's you know everyone has their life figured out more than you it's like oh they're getting married they're having kids yeah you know, on linkedin they're just more successful and more driven and more you know, <laughs> outgoing on instagram it's, it. everybody's having a better time than you you know they, they have the, like they're going to more places they're doing more things they know cooler people they're you know in the right thing at the right time with Twitter, it's everyone is smarter and better informed and funnier than you. And maybe more attack angrier, I guess, more. <laughs> it's like, you can ang get angry on Twitter easily. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. You know, the, 
yeah, that sort of like get them that hashtag man, come on, boom. How woke you can be, <laughs> um, and I, I think that wow, it's with that sort of a competition. Yeah, I, I I like Twitter because it does push me to know more. Okay, and learn more about what's going on and. You know, think about things that I hadn't thought about before. Mm-hmm. With Instagram, I don't think it challenges me in that way, you know, because the way that people use it a lot of times isn't to, you know, get ideas out necessarily. You know, it's it's great when people do. To show, yeah, more like to show, show off or showcase or whatever, yeah. Yeah, like this is yeah. the commercial for their life. True. Um, yeah. <laughs> And so it's funny when you ask Samuel L. Jackson the life achievement award. It was a funny answer. <laughs> He's like, "Ah, you won that life achievement." He's like, oh, "I earned it." <laughs> you can't get anything past Samuel L. Jackson. No, like you have to be quick on your feet. I know, it was... and you can't like let him fluster you. Like I, when he was here in Dubai, <laughs> I remember the like I, we ended up having an interview with like a group. Wow. Okay. And there's somebody from like Golf Digest interviewed him. It's like, so are you planning on golfing in Dubai? No. And I just watched this person's soul just of course. shatter inside of me. And he gives you the impression he's not really saying anything after that. <laughs> yep, that was it. No more golf conversation. I'm sure they'd you know, pitch that to their editor. I'm going to get this great golf conversation. Nope. I got the word N-O. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. So, so listen, when I tweeted that, I got a DM um, you know, from, uh, from somebody in Dubai saying, I really would like to know who the top three movies for were you. And it's like, I know I told, mm. I said, reply back, man, listen, somebody who's interviewed a lot of these people like that has like a huge, there's this video clip on you on um, Dubai Eye where they ask you about horror movies and you go mm. on and, and you really mention in details. You, you're, you like movies. So I just want to throw it out there. Can we find out? Like, what are your top three it, movies? Or? I mean, it's shifting all the time. No, like, not numbers wise, <laughs> if you don't want to rank them. Because it's, I mean, it's like, Even for music and for, for mm. movies, there's just, you know, there's times in my life when I knew that that movie was everything that I needed. Like when I met John Favreau, yeah. I mentioned that, you know, Swingers when I was in high school. Like when you're going through that first breakup when you're 15 years it's old. It's the perfect that's, film. That's the, hard, it's the hardest thing you've ever done in your yeah, life. Yeah. And this is the only film that seems to understand what you're going through. Correct. And I wouldn't say it was the favorite movie of, my life, like of all time now, but mm. at that point in my life it was. And okay. so I think a lot of times it's about connecting to your own struggles mm. and those are the films that really resonate with me mm, mm, mm. and sometimes it's just you know there's a lot of different ways that you come to things like I, in the last year or so I've been really appreciating Brian De Palma as a lover of film who's not only able to go back the same way that Tarantino is you know because uh. Tarantino loves movies all the time yes. he's got a movie out right now that we haven't seen in Dubai yet it's coming out in the middle of the month that's a, an ode to old Hollywood But I don't ever feel like after I've seen a Tarantino movie that he really said anything about those movies. It's like I learned what he loves, but I didn't learn what he has to say about it. Okay. Whereas De Palma, he would take, you know, all these different things from, you know, Alfred Hitchcock or all these things that he grew up on, and he would find something and push it back to them. I think, like, mm. the the French New Wave, again, I'm getting, I'm getting like, really obscure at this point. But I love that. The okay. guys, like, the French, they sat there in, like, the 1950s and 60s. And they watched all the American movies from the 30s and 40s the same way that the Americans did. And they saw value in things that the Americans didn't. Didn't? Like what? Like, like Hitchcock's a great example. Yeah. Like, mm. Truffaut was a great, great French director. He became a great director, but he started off as a kid who just loved all these old crime films and saw that these were masters of their form, that you know, they were putting a stamp on something, that they had something to say, that you know, this was you know, beautiful art. And I think a lot of times we have a hard time evaluating exactly what art is even now with the Oscars you know oh, you, big time. you look at the Oscars and it's just like we look at like the Oscars are almost a genre it's like this is the sort of film that would win an Oscar is what you're looking for more than what is the best film or the film you enjoyed most in that year and so I think that the, the directors who are able to look at movies and identify things that other people didn't and, and they have something to say about that and are able to bring their own voice to it as well. Like, that's what I'm trying to do with my work. And yeah. so a lot of times those are the films that I gravitate towards. So, you know, like Blowout by De Palma, Blowout. Um, 400 Blows by Francois Truffaut, uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller um, by Robert Altman. Like, again, these are obscure. <laughs> wow. Um, but, like, each of those guys did something with those films that just pushed something forward in a way that maybe people didn't even notice, maybe people still don't even notice. Till now. But it just, it, it just hit me. Man, have you seen the Instinct film? Instinct, which mm-hmm. one? Um, 
Anthony Hopkins and uh, oh yeah I not in forever oh, yeah. should I rewatch it mm. that's the other thing sometimes you watch a movie back in the day you rewatch it and it's gone the magic is not there at all sometimes all of a sudden you understand yeah. what the appeal was no I mean I mean my my dad passed away in 2000 and he, one of his film that. films was uh, Legends of the Fall mm. And I connect to that film till now because this is one of the very few films that he's seen, mm. have seen together. So you're right. Maybe the film is okay, but I remember the memories of him being next to me yeah. and just watching that. And I feel like, well, I like that film. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, for me, I still like, I wear my grandfather's dog tag. Like he was oh, in World wow. War II. Okay. He was a machine gunner in, you know, Patton's Third Army. I don't know if you ever saw like um, Band of Brothers, the HBO show. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for example, remember that episode where they're stuck in the woods and it's, you know, they're freezing to death. Um, and they, there's, you know, the Nazis are on either side and they don't think they're going to make it out. One of them finds, like, the German gun and accidentally shoots himself. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then at the yeah, end, they yeah. think they all think all hope is lost and they come get, they get saved by these guys. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather was one of those guys that came to save What? Them. Like, that's a real story. And he was that guy. Wow. So I, I remember watching that and just bawling that my eyes out. Mm. Because I was able, but I'm sure it'd be different for someone else. But wow. I, I wouldn't even love movies the same way. I don't yeah. think, or know as much about movies if he hadn't been there on the couch next to me, showing me every every classic Western film, Big every up. classic horror and film. It's, it's always amazing to see that there's a, a, like a person in the story. But man, I swear, I like this is uh, really incredible, man. Uh, really, I want to thank you for your time. I no, I can easily get like. Uh, we could spend the whole day talking movies, but you're somebody who's really. I just wanted to do this interview as well as a celebration to you, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, that. I've, I know a lot. Of, we have a lot of people in common, and everyone that that you know obviously knows you, have always said incredible guy, amazing, humble, um, very talented. You know, like so. I just wanted to, to to shout you out and to tell you that we really love you, man. Seriously, like well, thank you, you do a lot of work, um, and. You're educating a lot of people about, you know, films and movies and, you know, and uh, even style of interviewing for me. I really love it. So I I really thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you do. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm, I constantly question it the same way everybody else does. Yeah, I, I, I get it. But, you know, like, yeah. My final question is this. What can we find on William uh, MP3 player? What kind of music do you listen to? Like, I'm really interested in that. Oh, it's, it's all over. I just actually... Um, I got a vinyl record player over the weekend, like yeah, I finally a good Nats. one. Shout out to Nuts. Yeah. Nat Natalie. Well, Nuts got me, uh, she got me a new record. Okay. Because um, my, my old record player was just terrible. Okay. I got these great speakers. Okay. And I forgot how great it is to just, like, the context of how you listen to music, how much that matters to the music itself. Yes. And so, yeah, when I'm traveling, it could be, you know, Trap Called Quest or, you know, ha! classic, like... Now we're talking, brother! <laughs> Let's move! <laughs> A trap called Quest. Or like, really? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that shocked me. I didn't. Even, what? Really? Low end theory was. Just, yeah, that was just the yeah. album for me. That's the face. Or oh, like, yeah. I, I, for me, it was like the introduction was, like, hip hop was the first genre that I found that felt like mine because, like, my my father is like a really like he's a huge music guy and he okay. like, introduced me so much with my grandfather, but hip hop was mine. Like, I found that, and I think like vibrant thing that was like. When Vibrant Thing came out, wow. the Q-Tip, yeah, I was just this is the greatest guy ever. I mean, Yo. obviously, I appreciated like Fife and yes, and you know, Tarek and all those guys as, as it went on. But like, Five, man, one of the I think he's also an incredible MC. No, what gets, a guy! And he gets underrated. Yeah, very. Like, rest in peace. Who, okay, since you know you're with hip hop, who do you, who do you like? Your top MCs? Who do you like? Hmm, all time. Yeah. Well, I mean, other than you know Tribe, I like Early Common. Early um, common, like early common, okay, like okay. resurrection. Common. I love okay. Oh like wow, up to like water from chocolate. Okay, <laughs> like after like once he met Kanye, it's like and as an actor, it's like those are still good, but it felt like more yeah. like it was. I hear you. That was Kanye that was just trying to pay tribute mm. to No ID and like the early stuff. Common man is yeah definitely. Um, but yeah, like I used to love her and those sorts of songs. Yeah, like, yeah. Just he was a master. Really? Um, I mean, there's so many things like. Prodigy was great. Obviously, like, or, like, I think that Black Thought. What do you think of Black Thought? Black Thought's good. I mean, he's never. He's always one of those guys who it's like he never really broke through on his right. own. Right, under the roots, always like, you know, I never. <laughs> but he did that freestyle, uh, and that this is where really it got on a commercial level. I think he's really yeah. one of the most underrated MCs ever. No, and I think he always is gonna be. And I think like part of that is just because he never really had his defining statement on his own. 
you know, he never really found that. And I'm not really sure what it was. It's kind of like Jay Electronica is a guy who's just all the talent in the world, knows everything about hip hop. Wow. But like, we still don't even have the album. Yo, I just, 15 yo if I respected you this one, now I respect you like that. Man, I it's never really like, thought you listened to hip, like hip hop. I don't know why. I oh, never but really... I mean, it's everything. Like, yeah. um, these days, like, I don't know if you know the band Big Thief or like indie, like folk, that sort of What's thing. What's it called? Big Thief for like Adrian Lenker. Okay. She is. Is that, is that, do you know that band? Uh, Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but like for me, like there's certain things that I'm always looking for, like you know, a classic soul album. Mm. Like I've been listening to a lot of like Shuggy Otis recently, and he's just like a master. When I find something like that, like I listen to you know early '70s soul, like Al Green or Marvin Gaye, and I forget why we have any other genres but that. You know, it's just like this is all we really need. <laughs> That's so um, true. And I feel oh, the God. same way about like a great female um, folk artist, like you know a Joni Mitchell. Um, and I, I think that. I'm always looking for, you know, another person like that who can really have that sort of a voice. And Adrian Lenker, if you ever like, you know, acoustic music. Yes. She made an album when she was 21 called Hours for, Hours for the Birds. Okay. And it's got, nobody nobody knows it, nobody rates it, but I just am obsessed with it. Like, I, I check just, that out. I can't stop listening to it. Can, can I push myself even further to, um, to propose to give you a mixtape that has some Arab talent on it? Yeah, love to hear it. Like, to, you know, for you to hear it, you just put play. Check it out. Yeah, sure. Okay, it has like Arab talents that sing in both English and Arabic. And... Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, man, I have so many questions. I got to ask you this. <laughs> so there's a bit discussion about Netflix movies not being judged or, or in you know, the Oscars. What do you think about that? I think that's gatekeeping, but in a bad way. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. art is art, movies are movies, and... I think that it's harder and harder for artists to be able to make this sort of... Like, I think people don't focus on the business side of movies enough because it drives so much of the art itself. Like, people, all, every single... The biggest uh, artists, actors in the world, the biggest directors in the world are going from their first indie movie to directing a $200 million Marvel movie. Not because that was their lifelong dream, but because that's just what is out there. Like, that's what they can do. That's where they can put their talents. Okay, okay. And when you have a Netflix, yeah. a Netflix will say yes to a great director, maybe a classic person like Martin Scorsese, maybe like an up-and-comer, um, you know, people of color who don't necessarily have their voices shared a yeah. lot of times, and they will allow them to reach their vision. Mm. And they were probably the only ones that said yes to that. Yes. So for then, you know, Hollywood to turn around and, you know, poo-poo this and call it a TV movie, it's, it's all the same art, it's all the same artists, and you need to value the art for what it is. It doesn't really matter the platform that it comes out on. And yeah, maybe you're scared about people aren't going to the cinema enough, but a lot of that's your fault because you're putting only, like you go to the cinema now and there's 15 different ways to see The Lion King, and that's fine, The Lion King has its place, but it's so impossible to find like those smaller movies. So if those smaller movies can find their audience on Netflix, then that's so a beautiful be thing. Yeah, I love that. Like that allows those voices to exist. That allows you to get those projects made. Do you, feel, do you feel as a film critique yourself that sometimes, I know it's the critique, sometimes you can't say your full 100% opinion out there, or that's what you're there for, to say your opinion? Yeah, but... I'll, Are you holding back sometimes? Sometimes I might be holding back just because... Uh, again, I, I don't ever want to sit there and make... like I, I think the most useless reviews are the reviews where you're trying to tell other people what they might think. Like if you say, oh, the kids are going to love this, or I, I think hate. this is the right one for the women. It's like... Who the hell are you yeah. to say this? Speak from your... You're obviously subjective. Don't try to be objective in your opinion. But at the same time, it doesn't. I don't think every thought that I have is worth sharing. And I want a conversation or my thoughts to be out about a movie. Do you get something out of that? You know, do you have something like... To have something valuable about that conversation? And even if we don't share the same opinion, I want my review to be something that you felt like you talked to a friend of yours and you learned something you didn't uh -huh. or you were able to connect on something maybe you didn't, hadn't thought about all the way or you didn't realize another person was thinking about. And so as long as I'm doing that, as long as I'm sharing something valuable, that doesn't necessarily mean that if I, you know, make something, fun of something in my head or, you know, I get bored about something or maybe I'm having a bad day and yeah. I can't focus, yeah. that I, I then want to share that thought too. Oh, so man. sometimes when I'm holding back, it's not just because I don't want to you know, piss people off, but it's just because man it's just sometimes that negativity just isn't productive yeah and a, a, like a like a good criticism is productive i agree with that uh, man any any last words you'd like to say uh on, on buckle up i'm just i it's two things this is the first time i kind of stopped while driving because i was really enjoying i couldn't i want to really enjoy what you're saying really amazing and i thank you for 
really giving me the opportunity to, to sit down with no, you. Ser- seriously, you know, I again, if you really Google you, you're not going to find a lot of, you know, interviews, like I said, with you. Mm. And and I really feel honored that you gave me this chance. Ser- seriously. No. no I, I, Any last words? I appreciate it. <laughs> you'd like to say to buckle up. No, I, I want to say thank you as well. And, you know, if you're interested in seeing these interviews, you can find them at um, youtube.com slash lead slash The Cutaway, my podcast, The Cutaway, mm. uh, my website, thecutaway.co, or just, you know, Google it, find those articles, they're out there. Yeah, definitely going to put it right here. Subscribe, like his channel. How many subscribers do you got now? It's 1,082. Okay. I mean, like, I was thinking about Blink-182 today, so it's a little ode to them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. it's new. We're still pushing it. We're growing. Support it, but We're you growing. got some incredible. You know, I think with the YouTube channel, people view without subscribing. Yeah, especially you because you got, to, like, you got like seventy thousand, eighty thousand hits yeah. in videos. Yeah, you don't think it's gonna be like a guy who's sitting there and having this. You just think like these videos come from the ether, especially when there's like a big celebrity in it. Yeah. You know, it feels less personal than a guy just talking to the camera with you know his cat in the background, you know, giving his opinion, like reaction video. <laughs> Um, but it is just me, you know. This is like my it's, voice. That's you. My yeah. way to be able to share it. That's funny, man. Uh, your 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 Twitter handle, please. At wh Mulally. four L's, all the L's. Um, same thing with Instagram at wh Mulally. A lot of people wonder about the L's. Uh. There's a lot of L's. Especially the second L is the tricky one. Yeah, William it's Mulally. The, yeah. The Mulally. <laughs> people want to make it like an adverb in a way, like something is Mulally. He <laughs> ran Mulally. You ever you ever thought of doing stand-up comedy? <laughs> Seriously, I, I think you do really well in. I think comedy. about it all the time. I have nightmares where I do it. And I go up there and I like, I'm like, oh, it's finally my opportunity. I forgot to come up with anything. Man, I don't even have my type five ready. Man, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Guys, like and subscribe. Uh, love, love to you, William. Thank you so much. Peace and love. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.